Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Hallelujah. 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 Grab somebody by the hand and tell them it's being made manifest. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's being made manifest right before our eyes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. The presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Those who are coming into our service right now, we welcome you into our service. Hallelujah. We welcome you into the sanctuary. We welcome those who are watching by Facebook Live or Zoom or YouTube. This is the day the Lord hath made. Hallelujah. And we come into his presence with prayer. And thanksgiving, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God for what he has done. How many are glad to be here this morning? Oh, come on, stand on your feet and give God a hand of praise. Yes, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Thank God for what he has done in your life. Hallelujah. Look back over your life and see where God has brought you from. Hallelujah. 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 So we sing glory to your name. Glory to your name. Sing it with me. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Bye. 
As we're standing, hallelujah. Now, Father, we just thank you. We just thank you for your word. We thank you for those present. We thank you for those who are coming, not only in this physical building, but we thank you for those who are coming into the body of Christ. We see your harvest. We see your souls. We see souls being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. We see souls running to you, being tied from the cares of this world. We thank you, O oh God, for being the true and living God. We bless your name this morning. We give you honor, glory, and praise to your matchless name, Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Is anybody glad to be in God's presence? Is he wonderful to you? Hallelujah. Is he lovely to you? Hallelujah. Can we just open up our mouths and bless God in this place because he is a great God and he deserves great praise. And we are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. We ought to be thankful unto God and bless his name. He has brought us out. He is our righteous redeemer.
my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm saying all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means, this means war. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all this well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means, this means war. Come on, put those hands together. Happy. 
the blood. The blood of Jesus. Be against you. The blood of Jesus. Be against you. I do. You can't have my family. You can't have my breakthrough. I plead. I plead the blood. Tell somebody I plead the blood. The blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. I plead the blood. The devil is a lie. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I know we celebrated uh, Good Friday last a week or so ago and that's the Sunday last Sunday. Amen. But the Lord is still alive. Yeah. Amen. God's not dead. He's yeah. still alive. He's still, he's still alive. He's still alive. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. He's still alive. You didn't, you don't, you, all you need to understand is that God's not dead. He's moving by his spirit. He's moving in supernatural manners for his glory and for his honor. Put your hands together and glorify God. Thank you. Thank you, Grace team. Thank you so very much. Those who are watching, thank you for being part of our services this morning. Amen. Zoom, Facebook, amen. Parking lot, however you're, amen, tuning us in. We're glad that you're here in Jesus' name. And this is a church that pleased the blood of Jesus. Amen. This is, this is a congregation, amen, that knows there's power in the blood. Amen. There, this, this is a preacher who knows there's power in the blood. Amen. That, 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 that's an evangelist. That's a minister that knows there's power in the blood. Somebody say the blood. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus that was shed for us way back on Calvary. Thank you for being a part of the service this morning. Amen. Thank God for the early morning. Amen. Prayer this morning. Amen. Prayer in the sanctuary intercessory prayer thank you made those uh made that special uh, sacrifice of being here amen for god that god be the glory and for god amen the glory and the honor praise the lord we're going to be having communion today the lord's supper amen i'm so grateful amen jesus paid it all all to him i owe amen he paid the debt he paid the debt for you and he paid the debt for me as we prepare ourselves to receive the communion, amen, I'm going to ask that you keep biblical re references in mind as we're preparing ourselves. We'll ask the ministerial staff and those who are going to be serving you to come expeditiously, amen, because we realize simply, amen, it's all about him, amen, it's all about him, and it's in him we live, we move, we have our very existence. It's about him, amen. We're, we are on this terra firma of earth for only a, for a short while. Really, it's, 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 a, it's a short while. It's a short while. And you can live to be 150. It's still a short while in regards to reference to eternity. But the Lord, he went to Calvary. He went and shed his blood for your sins and for my sins. Amen. He did a job. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That, that's what it says. Now, if, if you ever, if you ever been uh, uh, classified as a sinner or have sinned, if you, if you ever sinned in your life, raise your hand. Okay, oh, got your hand. Well, just turn around. Let's look at, make, raise your hand again so people know that, that you're there. I know there are a few holy, holy people in, you know, who are angelic beings, but thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I, I see. I see my friend, uh, Amazing Grace, had a hand raised up. Amen. I wasn't sure. If, I wasn't sure if her brother pushed your hand up to say, "Yeah." <laughs> Amen. Amen. But what Jesus did, He let us know that all have sinned and come short of the glory. That, that's that's true. But the Bible says that if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. There's a wonderful thing to be a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away, but all things become new. 
That's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus did. He paid the price that no one else could have paid. He paid the price for your sins and my sins. And so to prepare ourselves receiving communion, amen, with our eyes, our minds, our heart goes back, not only to Calvary, but to back to what Jesus did for us. Amen. May I say he did a good job? Yes, he did. No, he did a great job. He did it. He did it. Elder Jeff says yes to me. He, he did that. Amen. And so we all had need of a Savior. And so Jesus has come and done the work that no other man could do. He's done the work that no uh, sacrifice of bulls and heifers could do. Jesus paid the price. And for that, we give him the glory, the praise, and the honor. I don't know if any of us are really, uh, I use the word, uh, uh, worthy to take the Lord's Supper. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Amen. But the Bible says, as often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. So even this morning, we prepare ourselves to uh, receive the Lord's Supper. Amen. And we realize that what a mighty God we serve. He's not dead. He's still alive. And he's moving in all of our lives. Amen. Those are the two persons who are going to pray God's blessing upon the elements of Come forth quickly. Pass the boom. It's time for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Eternal God, our Father, we come to you this morning. Praise God. We come to you, hallelujah, to live, to shout, to rejoice because of what you've done. Father, we thank you because you died and bled for us. God, we might have a right to the tree of life. Father, we thank you, hallelujah, that healing has been given to us because of what you've done. Father, we thank you, hallelujah, because by your stripes we really are healed, and we thank you, God. Father, we thank you, hallelujah, for every wound you took, God. Every, every uh, praise God, snapping of the whip, praise God. Every time they crushed you, praise God, it was for us, God. It was for our diseases and our issues and our problems, God, that you've done. Father, we thank you because by your stripes, we are healed. We walk in healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God, for the bread, hallelujah, that you've given to us. This body broken for us that we might have a right to the tree of life. We we walk in victory this morning, God. We stand in the power of the Holy Ghost, God. Hallelujah in the, in the name of Jesus. Father, even as we partake of this body broken and the blood that was shed, Father, we take a step out on faith on what you've done. Because you've died for us, we have a right to the tree of life. We are born again of the water and of the spirit, God. And so we thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, uh, and we glorify you. Hallelujah. We lift up your name because nobody else could have done it but you, God. Uh, nobody else could have done it but you, God. Uh, nobody else could have done it. Uh, oh, God. But you did it, God. Uh, and we walk in victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because of what you've done. Praise God in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Boone. Amen. amen. We're going to ask the ones who are going to be serving, if you would come at this time period and take your position. Amen. We'll be starting from the rear and all four stations. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout glory. Glory. Somebody say just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's an awesome God. The soloist or the singer is already in place. Amen. Momentarily, you're going to be asked to come forward for those who want to receive the Lord's Supper. And you're going to start, we're going to start from the rear. Amen. And once you get the elements of the communion, if you just hold the cup, remove this uh, foil, the clear foil. This map will expose the, the, the bread and hold it in your hand. We'll go further in Jesus' name. At this time, shall we all stand? Could you face your left? That way they'll serve you from, from the rear. You may start coming from the rear. In Jesus' name, thank you.
What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but
place. We were wretched, young individuals. He took our place. Amen. I'm grateful that he did. Amen. Now I have life. Life now is sweet and my joy is holy. Because I'm saved, saved, saved. God bless you. Be seated. In Jesus' name, put your hands together and glorify God. For all that he has done is doing. Amen. As we're in this time period. Amen. Of different uh, healing. It's healing time. Amen. And we're not going to let it go. Amen. The Lord is so faithful. He proves himself in all of our lives in a supernatural manner. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. One of the things we can do on a continuous basis is, is open up the Bible and see all, not only the miracles that God has done through prophets and through uh, apostles and miracle after miracle through Christ, amen, but we see clearly that in the Word of God, in the Word of God, there is not only healing, but there's a peace, a tranquility. Uh, some of you I know are avid readers, and, and I respect the avid reader who reads and enjoys reading. Amen. But I, when you just read the Word of God, sometimes you have to see la. You got to take one verse and stop. Ah, I, I know you're trying to finish the chapter of the day, you want to go through it, but sometimes you take, take that one section, one, one verse of that chapter, and it hits you. My Lord, it's oh, and you kind of pause because it gets down in your very spirit, and the Lord shows himself faithful. I'm grateful for the word of God. We are grateful. Brothers and sisters, let us appreciate the word of God. Let, appre let us appreciate what God has given us he sent his word. His word was sent. Amen. It was sent. Amen. Notifications now. Those of you, how many have smart cell phones? Smart. How many have dumb phones? Okay. Dumb. Whether a smartphone or a dumb phone, amen. It, makes, it doesn't make a difference. The Lord sends his word. He sends his word. He, he bl a, a, a quick blast. You know, you know somebody's missing, there's a blast goes on your phone, you know, that goes out, amen, I'm grateful that the Lord sends his word, amen so we can always be in touch we can be in touch I've asked the evangelist for ring down into ministry for us this morning, in Jesus name evangelist, evangelist Downing is a student of the word, she enjoys the word immensely so I'm convinced today that she'll share with us, amen, that which God has given unto her to give unto us. And doing such, we're going to be blessed. Let's receive the word of God this time. This term in the person of evangelist Florine Down. And let's receive a hearty praise of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory, 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 hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, praise be unto God, hallelujah, hallelujah, blessings be upon, hallelujah, the men and women of God that are gathered here this morning, hallelujah, I wanted to start off, I thank God for what Bishop said, because one of the true things is so, last week, didn't we have a time in here? I'm telling you, God move. Thank you to Pastor Lawrence, to Sister Cammie, Sister um, Shin, um, Shekana, and all those that put together that service. Talking about he lives. See, I, I, I had two sermons. I had one and it was going to talk about the day after. The day after he got off the cross and the day after he rose. We still have to remind each other that he lives, amen? 
we still have to wake up on Sunday, the, the Monday after he arose and say he lives. We still have to remind ourselves when we go to work that he lives. I'm going to tell you, I, I ran in that spirit. I kept watching it and I texted Shekinah and said I kept crying. I was elated over the work that God was doing. So I took that opportunity and so should you. Uh, Pastor, um, I'm about to call him Pastor Larry, but Pastor uh, Brother Lawrence was in there at work and every time we got a chance, we talked. Now, some of you might not be able to do it at your job, but every time we got a chance, we talked about the service and what God had done. Why? Because it was an opportunity to witness. It was an opportunity to share that not only on Sunday, but you can come out this week because he still lives. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was just so excited, but that's not my sermon for the day. Hallelujah. <laughs> I thank God, thank God for our pastor, our bishop, uh, Robinson, amen, hallelujah. Our assistant pastor, Pastor Hannah Boone, Pastor Lawrence and Pastor Larry and First Lady Rob Robinson. We praise God for the men and women, for all the ministerial staff and for those who sacrifice their time and, and lay before the Lord in order for us to hear a word. I, I honor Bishop because when he asked me to minister at first, I said yes, and then I thought about it. I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not where I want to be. Not where I used to be. Not where I'm going. But I praised God and I called him back and I said, Bishop, no, nah, I can't do this. I said, I, I'm, I, I'm really not, you know, where I need to be. And I thank God for the Holy Ghost who reminds you. He said, it ain't never been about you. He said, in all those times you thought it was about you, you forgot it was about me. And I thank God for reminding us or reminding me, how about that? <laughs> it was never about you. You ain't never had a word. I always gave you the word. So today, as I stand in my place to give you a word of God, because the diocesan of this house, the bishop of this house, heard the Lord to say that there was a word. Amen? Amen. So I ask that you pray with me. And I also, and I'm, I'm getting to the word. If you'll, you'll find me in Genesis, the 15th chapter. On behalf of the Downing household, we never get an opportunity to just say thank you. This has been a long period in our life. It's been well over uh, three to four years. But Church House, you have stayed with us. You have covered us. You have celebrated our heights and you've uh, prayed with us through our, our difficulties. So on behalf of myself and Minister Arnold Downey, we want to say thank you. I want to applaud you, hallelujah. <laughs> I am the type of person that Minister Arnold or Al doesn't know this. I put it out there. If he's in the hospital, I'm going to tell you because guess what? We need prayer. Hospital is full of the spirit of sickness and we need prayer. So I'm going to tell you and I thank God because I'll see the, the numbers going up. I'll send it to Dawn and I say, I ain't got time to write it all and she'll send it to her. And I'll see the prayer warriors going on on our behalf. So believers, I, I urge you. Don't be like that. Don't, don't hide behind what you think people are going to say. Because you know what? People are going to talk anyway. Reach out to the men and women of God who can pray for you and lift you up in your time of need. And I, I'm getting ready to get, did I say Genesis, the 15th chapter? But I want to say to you for all of those, and I was talking to Sister Evangelist Wiggins the other day, Bishop, and she reminded me, and I want to say also thank you for those sanctified handshakes. And what they used to be in the old time, it used to be those sanctified handshakes where they slip a little something in your hand. and they, Because you know, this journey has been long and it's not easy all the time. And sometimes you need to show up at a Wawa where there's a spiritual woman of God there who can just see where you are and just hug you. Just said, just, just you can lay in her arms and celebrate and she prays for you. But then there are those who have stopped by and cash app and sent cards and things like that on the behalf of the, and stopped by just to visit on behalf of myself and my husband, who's here by the grace of God. Every time, amen. Every time the enemy will push him down, he will get right back. I think Reed always said it's like the, uh, the bunny. 
we, <laughs> the bunny, it falls down. We, we, we fall down, but we get back up. And I praise God. Even this morning, he knew I had to minister, and he said he was not feeling bad. I mean, he was not feeling well. And I said, okay, one sock at a time. And we were putting it on. I said, how do you feel after I got the first sock on? And he said, oh. I said, but we're going to believe God. And I started, Bishop, so you didn't know this, but I started pleading the blood in my own household. And I said, I plead, babe, didn't I? I said, I plead, I plead the blood, because you're going with me this morning. And on the next socks, and before we know, I said, how you feel? Every time I got to pause so he could catch his breath. But the thing was, is we believe God. And it's because of the prayers of the righteous. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So as we go into the word of God, I ask that you will bow your heads and please bear with me as I do this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Speak through these lips of clay. Speak words you would have me say. Speak, Holy Ghost, I pray. Speak, have thine own way. Speak through these lips of clay. Speak words you would have me say. Speak, Holy Ghost, I pray. Speak, have thine own way. And that there might be edification. And that there might be rededication to a new regeneration and through a new regeneration that is to come all i want you to do is just speak lord i want to be filled with your presence speak lord i want you to have your way speak lord speak Holy Ghost, speak Holy Ghost. I want you to speak, God. Father, as we come before you this morning, we humbly bow our heads, God, asking that you would speak a word, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that will minister to the hearts of your people, God, that you will get the glory even on this morning. Father, we ask that you would move, God. You've already set the atmosphere with prayer. So this morning, we seek your face, God. Oh! God, that you will speak a word into the life of your people, God. It is truly your word this morning that will make the difference in our lives, God. So as we speak in the authority of this house, God, in the word that you have shared for this morning, God, this healing in the house, God, we ask that you move through the word, God, and open our eyes, that our eyes might see that in the word, this healing, God, through the word, this healing, through the lean of hands, this healing this morning, God. Father, we trust you and we believe you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You'll find me in Genesis, the 15th chapter. And the Bible reads as this. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Elijah, Eleazar of Damascus. I, I knew it last night. And Abram, Abram said, Behold to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir. But he shall come forth out of thine bowels, shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto them, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for righteousness. I'm going to take my text from that sixth verse in the A clause, and it says, and he believed in the Lord. Abram, as we all know, 
was called the man of faith, a man who walked out when God called him. But when I begin to look at the story and I begin when we all have heard, we've all been shared that Abram believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. We shouted over that and believed God. But I woke up the other morning, Bishop, and I, I literally, I was preparing my sermon and I was preparing what God had called me and I made the mistake of sharing that with one of God's appointed women of God. And she said to me, put a tick in my spirit, Pastor Boone, and she said, well, you know the word in the house is there's healing in the land. And I said, well, that's not what God gave me. But I thank God for those who will speak a word into your life. See, when we are walking according to this life, we need men and women who are going to speak into our life, who are going to say, yeah, I know you got this, but this is what I hear God say, and not be ashamed. Everybody can't do that. Yeah, we have friends, and I have friends, but there are sometimes there are those who steal away, and those who in those quiet places hear from God, and they speak a word that changed my whole message. I woke up the next morning and the Lord said, Genesis, the 15th chapter. And the reason why I'm sharing with you the work is because I want to see, let you see what God can do in your life. And I turned to Genesis, the 15th chapter. And when I turned and fell on that verse, my whole sermon was gone. Everything that I talked about, I was going to ride that train about, he lives. I was going to talk about how the young people ran across it. He lives, but God said, not only does he live, but you have to believe in God. It's not enough believers to know he lives because you know what the truth is? Sinners know he lives. It makes a difference that you believe he lives. And on today, God broke into my spirit, Genesis, the 15th chapter. So I went back to the beginning, and they said that Abram believed God. And I said, but he started walking in the 13th chapter. It wasn't until the 15th chapter till it kicked in. See, what happens is, is Abram did everything that he was taught to do. Story goes that his father, Terah, had lost his son, and they raised their nephew, Lot. And Terah, in the 12th chapter, the Bible says that he gathered his children together, Lot, Hamor, and uh, Abram, and he gathered them together because he wanted to make a difference in their life. So by the time we got to the 13th chapter, and the Lord spoke to Abram and said, get up from out of your kindred, Abram did exactly what he had seen before. He gathered everything that was under his thing and gathered and moved. But God didn't say that. See, sometimes in our life, God wants to break that family line. God wants to break that thing that we've always done. Well, I'm doing it like this because this is the way my family did it. I'm doing this so Abram, no fault to his own, but as he stepped out, he gathered all of the people that was around him. I was always told that God stopped speaking until he got it right in the 15th chapter. That's not true. But what God did stop speaking about was the promise. See, sometimes we gather people around us who God didn't say, no, they can't go that distance with you. And you're talking about, I can't hear the promise no more. Sometimes you need to check your surroundings. Sometimes you need to check the people that you're hanging with. Sometimes you need to check the people that you're running. But we always did it this way. This is how it was always done. Believer, God is trying to break up that old stuff, that old way that we're always using. Yeah, I believe in family dedication and I believe it, but there are some places we've got to go that we can't take everybody with us. And God is saying, break up some of those traditions. Break up some of those things. Yeah, they look good. They look okay. But God is saying, I want to bring you out to a different place. Well, we always did it this way. Yeah, but what about this? And Abram, God still spoke to Abram. And he said, I'm going to bring you out to a land where you see. And so what Abram did, every time he looked out, he saw his land, 
he saw a large land which looked like a vast majority. The Bible says that it was so large that it wasn't able to contain both of them. So every time Abram looked out, he saw what he had. He saw, but God didn't want Abram to see what he had. So what happened there was strife. He began to separate. And then by the time you get to the 15th chapter, and now Abram could see, and God spoke again about the promise. And he began to share with him. He said, Abram, he said, it's going to be because of your seed. God had to break some things down. Sometimes we go through things in this life, and we're wondering why we're going. See, sometimes God's got to break some things down so that we can go on and do what God has called us to do. One of the things that happened in, in my reading, it was that even though Abram was considered the father of faith, it did not really start until the 15th chapter. And I said, Lord, what is so different? He said, the scripture says in the sixth verse, and he believed in the Lord. That was the difference. It's like Bishop said, sometimes you got to see lot right there. Sometimes we go so fast over the scripture. As long as I had ever read that scripture, I had never read the part where he said, and Abram believed in the Lord. Abram stepped out earlier because he knew that there was a God of Israel. He knew that there was a God that sat high and looked low because of his lineage. He knew that there was a God that made a way, but he had never believed in the Lord. He knew that God was able and that he created the heavens and the earth because that was passed down through his lineage. He knew the scripture, not necessarily, or he knew what they called the Torah. But Abram now believed in the Lord. It comes a time, like last Sunday, when the Lord comes to stir up our faith. Last Sunday morning, I don't know about you, but for me, it was a revival. It revived my spirit. It gave me joy. I was, I kept playing the thing over and over. He lives, and that means he lives in my soul. And if he lives, I better walk and talk like he lives. I better act like he lives. Why are you discounted? Why is my heart so broken? He lives. Am I going through? But he lives. Am I tired? But he lives. Remind yourself when you're faced with something. Yeah, it's been 13 years, but he lives. We have to be what the world sees. We have to gather those little children that was here last week. Bring them back and remind them. Remember that thing that you said? Well, we're going back again. Yeah, they're going to fuss and they fight. So did I. So did you. But remind them every day you know he lives. They've got to know that in the face of this world that there is a God who lives. There's a God who is concerned about you. There is a God who lives. Pastor Lawrence said last week, he said, Buddha, you can find his grave. Muhammad, you can find his grave. But there is no grave for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You don't have to be a preacher. All you have to be able to say is he lives. You don't have to challenge and debate like we used to do. All you have to say is he lives. You don't have to know the scriptures all from cover to cover. Just know he lives. And they say, well, how do you know he lives? Because he lives inside of me. He gives me joy. He walks with me, talks with me. He makes sure that I know I'm his own. He covers me. He fills me. There are days I don't feel like making it, but he lives. He lives in you. He lives in me. That should be the testimony. There comes a time where services come to stir up our faith. And one of the things that happened is over the last couple of months, Bishop has been preaching this healing in the house. And we say, well, where is it? Oh, there's healing. Oh, there's healing in the house. But where are the people that need to be healed? We leave them home in their wheelchairs. We leave them home on their walkers. We leave them home with their fevers and headaches, and I do understand that. But where are the believers who want to keep them dressing even when they don't feel well? Where are the believers going to say, listen, I know you don't feel well, but I believe God. There's healing in the house. Now, see, 
Bishop says it's healing in the house because that's what God said. But when altar call comes, you keep your sicknesses to yourself. All right, go right ahead. But God said, bring them in the house. He said, there's healing in the house. Go pick them up. Are there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church. Let them lay hands on you. You relegate or you take a look at our lives and say, I don't want this person and I don't want that person. You're going to miss your blessing. Don't dictate what God is doing in their life because it ain't about them. God has given them the spirit that has been laid on by the bishop. And they're walking in this thing and they're believing God. There were days I did not feel like being up here. Pastor Boone said, get on your post. There was days I didn't want to pray. I wanted somebody to pray for me. But I was the vessel and the conduit that God would use. Don't miss out on your blessing. So there comes a time where God is coming to stir up our faith and to remind us that it's time to believe God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Abram had to hear God again. See, sometimes we don't hear God because we got so much stuff around us. We can buy a Tylenol. We can go to the doctor. We can do those things, but God is trying to do something new. God is trying to shake us up. Where we walk in the shadow of the loved one, we'll be healed because of the Holy Ghost. It's in the house, y'all. I really do believe it's in the house. I trust God is in the house. Not because Bishop said it, but because God said it. There comes a time, girl. There comes a time where the window is very narrow. And sometimes the window will close. Don't miss your opportunity. God said there's healing in the house. Don't be like that person who sat by the pool and said, every time I go to get in, somebody gets in before me. Make your way to the house. The altar is open. There's healing in the house. It's time for us to stop saying, I believe God. It's time for us to believe in God. Abram is a significant because he believed in God. There is a thing in the hermeneutical and theology, it's called first mention. First mention means that it goes throughout the scripture. So when it's first minute, you better best believe that God's going to do it again. Abram believed in God. God opened up the wounds of his wife because he believed in God. It is time that we first start in the house of the believer. It is time for us to believe God. A lot of times we get caught up, as I said earlier, what people are going to say, what people are going, oh, they're going to talk about. Listen, they're talking about you anyway. If they ain't talking about you, somebody else is talking about you. Don't get caught up and miss your window of opportunity. Don't mess around when the door is open. I hear Pastor Boone all the time say, there is a clarion call. So I'm going to borrow the words of the prophet and say, there is a clarion call. When the doors are open, bring your sick, bring your loved ones, bring them in. <laughs> Pastor Matthew spoke last week and he talked about how the friends got them together and they tore open the roof. Where are your friends? Where are the people that you ran with? Where are the people that you hung with? Are they willing to open up the roof? But if they're not, what about you? We hear people sick, tell them, can I pick you up? We'll drop you off at the door, and I'm a best believer, and I know they will. The deacons will pick you up at the door. By the time I hit the church door, I ain't got to worry. I'm going somewhere else, fixing my hair, doing my makeup, because they got him. That's what it's about. Bring your loved ones. Bring your sick. Remind them. I looked at this and I said, God, there's healing in the house. Or the Lord said there's healing in the house. I had to believe God. He said, see, Florine, you don't even believe what you're about to preach. I said, okay. Because it first starts with the preacher. I'm not standing up here telling you that I had all out faith because if that was the case, Minister Al wouldn't have had to wait till three months ago when Bishop Priest and Elder Larry gave the scenario and got up and walked, amen? But the truth is it has nothing to do with me. We must believe God. 
People said, somebody said to me, he said, well, you know, you usually shout, so why was it when he got up and walked? I said, because I was like, how he gonna get down? I said, but the same God that walked him up there will be the same God that will bring him down. But see, believer, this is what we have to do. We have to protect what God has done. What do you mean by that? We walk in faith, but then we got to protect what God has done. So God began to deal with me. He said, if you don't know, I have diabetes. And he said, if you're going to believe God for me and believe God for the healing, he said, you should have left them jelly beans back there at the church last week. Protect your healing. The Bible says in the scripture that Jesus prayed for the sick person and he told him, don't go back lest something greater comes upon you. What does that mean? Something that's going to try to snatch your sicknesses away. Something that's going to try to uh, attack you. We've got to protect the work that God has done. Now back to my story that I didn't want to tell, and I was telling to the friend, I ain't telling it because Bishop going to ask for the keys, but I'm going to share the story anyway. The Lord said to me, he said, Florine, you don't even believe what you're reading. Because I got up, honestly, y'all, my sermon was wrapped by Friday, the other one. And I woke up Saturday morning, and the Lord said, uh, chapter 15 of Genesis and he began to rewrite my story. But while he was writing it, he was speaking to me. Y'all know I have a red car, 115,000 miles, Ford Focus that I hold on dearly because that was the first one I bought and paid from front to end. So that's just my baby. And my husband bought me a wonderful tell you ride and it looks good. But my baby sat out there with a red sticker on it since 2020. And I said, so when I got up that morning, the Lord said, Take your car and get it inspected. And I said, well, Lord, oh, okay, God, I know what you're saying. Open up the app, find an appointment, because there's going to be an appointment open. God's going to open the doors, and there's going to be a point. See, we try to work out how God's going to do the work. And I did. I ran to my app, got my app open, opened it up, no appointments. So I went on studying. Okay, it must have been flooring. I must not hear it a word from God. And as God concluded this story, and he talked about that there was a difference in what it was, Abram believed God exists and that God communicates with individuals and makes promises, and God has the power to keep his promises, and God may be relied on to keep his promises. But by the time, that was the 13th chapter, by the time you got to the 15th chapter, there's a Jewish word in the Torah, and it says, imana, imanu. This was the difference in belief of a God and the belief in the God. By the time I got finished hearing that, the Lord said to me again, Florine, remember that window? <laughs> Door's about to shut. I said, Father, it's a Saturday morning, and the line's probably backed out. I drove that red car to that DMV. Now, y'all know the DMV. If you ain't got an appointment, you ain't getting in there. I drove up with the authority of vested in me, believing God, and I said to the woman, she said, do you have an appointment? I said, no, I don't. She said, drive right on through. That's what God will do. But while sitting home, I had already designed how God was going to do it. And I sat there and I said, God, okay, you doing it because there's a brother from the church that works there. He wasn't even the one at the door. God said there was somebody didn't it. She said, drive on through. And then when I got in there, I said, oh, they're going to turn me back because they're going to look at this. The Lord said, and I held my pose. I, do you have an appointment? No, I don't. Do you have an appointment? No, I don't. But let me show you what God will do if you believe God. As I stood in that line waiting for my car to be serviced or checked out, I saw people who had appointments <laughs> backed up because I came in there on God's word. Backed up. I said, Lord, the line is getting long. He said, but you got an appointment with me. I said, but I'm troubled because I'm scared. They're going to say something important. The line started backing up. God will back people up when you stand and believe God. God will open a door. He will make a way. You, I started worrying about what the people think. But when you walk in authority of the believer, you don't care what they think, but you
you stand there and believe God. Let the line be backed up. Let the doctor say, I don't know why I stopped by here, but you're a specialist and I want to come and see you. Trust God. Believe the work that God's going to do. Believe God. Abram believed God. I want to tell you that God doesn't do a half work, but as I ride around with my 2025 new sticker, <laughs> won't he do it? Yeah, he will. I believe in God. But it starts with us. We've got to be the first partakers. We've got to believe God. So this morning I heard God say, come unto me, all ye that laid in and heavy laid. He said, I'll give you rest. Why? Because it's healing in the house. Bring unto me your sick and your shut in. Why? Because it's healing in the house. I don't care whether it's mental, physical, or whatever's going on. Your heart might be broken, but there's healing in the house. God wants to do a work. I don't care whether it's a headache. God's got a Tylenol for that. All you have to do is believe in God. Trust God. Don't worry about what people say. Like I said before, it's God that's going to do the work. It's time, church, for us to believe in God. It's time for us to lean on God, not on our own things, what we can do and how we can do it. Don't look at your own self. I'll take a pill. No, I'm going to believe God. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with a pill. God works through doctors. God works through the physicians. But in this house today, God is saying, believe in God. The sermon, as Sister Pat helped me rewrite it this morning, is there's healing in the house. Because Bishop God knew that I need to be in line with the word for the house. And he lives but he lives in us. But there's healing in the house. Go on out, get your loved one, get your sick one, bring them in. Why? Because the doors of the church are open. There's healing in the house. God wants to do a work, not for your glory, but that he gets the glory. Can God use sick people? Yes, but he can do a better work with somebody who's healed. Hallelujah. Believe God, no matter how small or no matter how it looks, no matter the walls that are up against you, Abram looked out. He was now 93 years old. His wife was 90-something. But the Bible says that Abram believed in God. And the Lord opened up them wounds. We serve a wound opening God. We serve a cancer healing God. We serve a God. Go to your doctors. Get the report. Tell them to look again. Let the lines be backed up. But trust God. Don't be scared. Put your face as flint and say, I believe in God. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory. I believe in God. I believe in the Lord. In Abram. Mm. Ah. Believe in, believe in him. Believe in the Lord. Believe in the Lord. Count it as righteousness. Brothers and sisters, that's the right word for the right time. For the right person. The right person, right time, the right place. Altar workers are coming quickly, expeditiously. Why? Why should we believe in the Lord? 
Why should you believe? Why? 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 Abram developed a relationship with the Lord. He developed that relationship. Individuals have seen, individuals have heard, we have interacted with individuals who have had experiences with God. And God is not a man that he should lie. Brothers and sisters, I believe even this morning, sincerely of all of my heart, we've heard this morning is not just words that flutter into the air. But the Lord is speaking with you, speaking to us and saying to us, believe in me. Believe in me. Believe in him. Our confidence is in There are those who hear this very morning. Those individuals who God has even permitted and allowed the gift of healing to go forth in their lives. this down he says something really awesome simply meaning that I've got to believe God I have to believe what I'm preaching if I don't believe what I'm preaching if you don't preach it don't live it I've got to believe first thank you thank you thank you look listen listen look Somebody say Jesus.
It is in him we live and move and have our very being. Our existence, our being who we are. We believe you, Lord. We believe you, Lord. We believe you, Lord. Evangelist Downing, thank you for that word. Believing, I believe you, Lord. And Abram or and Edgar or and uh, Vanessa and Angela and Lilibel. Believe in the Lord. Uh, come on, put your name there. Put your name there. Put your name there. Believing the Lord means I walk right into it. I keep on going. I keep on walking right into it. Keep on walking into it. I keep on walking into it. It didn't happen, right? I keep on walking into it. Amen. I'm not going to stop. I believe in the Lord. I'm believing in the Lord. Your Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. And so when he has said it, I hold on to it and walk it in Jesus' name. Lift your hands and tell the Lord. Say, Lord, I believe. say amen again. Brothers and sisters, hold on to that word. Don't let it go. Hold on to it. Lock in on it. Amen. And know what God has said. It must come to fruition. It must come to pass according to his divine word and according to his divine will. It is already established in Jesus' name. Again, thank you, Pastor Downing. Amen. For sharing that word with us. That word with us this very morning. Jesus' name. Momentarily, the announcer is going to come with our announcements for the uh, week, so I ask you to give your attention to the announcer as she gives us the announcements. Please pay attention to it. Amen. And we're going to move in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Christ Gospel Church, no, Christ Gospel Church Love Center notices and announcements for Sunday, April 7th. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, it is. <laughs> Our New Jersey District Council will convene from April 11th through the 13th. Bishop Robinson will be our keynote speaker. Our keynote speaker <laughs> on Friday evening, and the Christ Gospel Church Love Center Mass Choir will be singing on that evening. On Friday at 11 a.m., the Men's Auxiliary will be honoring mighty men of valor and one of our uh, honorees again.